What's up, Epi students? How y'all doing tonight? Is anybody excited to be at Epi students tonight, right now, besides me? What a night. Middle schoolers, Jump Jam is coming. I know you're excited. I'm a little scared, to be honest, personally, uh, but I know that you're excited. How many people got your pop sockets tonight? Let me see if you got your pop sockets tonight. If you didn't do that, we have 500 pop sockets we want to give away to you just to say we love you. School's out, which is awesome, right? Got to be the best news all day. School is out. But then I want to share something else with you that's got me really, really excited. Movement's coming. Movement 17 is on its way. And students, I don't care if you are a sixth grader and this is your first movement with us or if you are a senior who just graduated. Do not, do not, do not. I'm begging you, please don't move, miss movement this year at UT's campus. It is going to be one of the best events we have ever done. Hands down, we're going to be able to do some things that you've never seen before. Man, rec is going to be incredible. Small groups and breakouts are going to be incredible. Some of the messages that God has laid on our hearts are going to be incredible. Don't let me even get me started on the after parties, people. They're going to be amazing. And you don't want to see the videos. You don't want to see the pictures and realize that you missed out. So if you haven't registered for movement, do that as soon as you can. And students, let me tell you something that will help you with your parents. You listen? Let your parents know that if they register you before May 31st, just a few days, that they can sign you up for only a $50 deposit and they can make a couple of payments on this thing instead of paying all at one time. Your parents will love you. Bless them for that. But hey, I want to show you two things we've got for you. In your seat, you should have a card that looks like this. Everybody go ahead and grab it. Wave it at me so I know that you've got it. And there should be another card that looks like this, a white one, right? You got that one? One in each hand? Just give me one of these. Awesome, awesome. Everybody should have one. If you don't have one in your seat, there should be one in the next seat, right? Uh, you should be able to find one. But let me tell you what these are. If you look at this first one, it says movement, official, offer letter. And we have designed these guys, whether you're a sports fan or not, you can use them. It's going to be an incredible tool for you. But we've designed these to look like an athletic scholarship offer letter. And when you open them up, it's actually got a letter from Pastor Zach. I would like to think of him as one of our coaches, right? It's got a letter from Pastor Zach. I've got one that's already been signed by one of our students who's going to movement. And here's what we would love for you guys to do. First of all, if you're in the building tonight and you're signed up for movement already, we would love for you to sign one of these, turn it into us. And in just a couple of weeks, we're going to start displaying them at this campus every single week so you can see who's going, pray over the card, see how we're growing. But here's the other thing. I want you to be able to take this card, put it in a friend's hand and say, hey, I'm only inviting a couple of people and you're one of them. I'm only inviting a couple of people to this thing, but you're one of them. I want you to go. Would you go with me to this event? I believe it'll be life changing for you. I believe you'll have a blast. And when they say they're ready to go, even if they can't afford to sign up yet, you're going to ask them, would they sign and commit to go? And you're going to celebrate that by putting it on the wall because we're going to celebrate people who actually go to movement with us. We're going to love on them that way. But now everybody look at this card because this is the most important one for you. I think when you give the other card to people, there's going to be a lot of people who feel really special when they realize you're only asking a couple of people to go and they're one of them. This is going to help you figure out who those people are, right? It says it's a movement conference recruiting list. You have three spots on there. So students, here's what we're asking you to do. I'm asking every student in this room, and Pastor Zach next week at summer kickoff is going to ask every student at every campus to come up with three names. Three people that God's put on your heart that you believe if they got to movement, it would change their life. It may change their eternity. It may wake them up to see what God's got for them. You know it would be the best week of their summer. So we want you to take and write those names down. But I want to give Pellissippi a specific challenge. Can you guys handle a little deeper challenge with me? Can you handle it? All right, here's what we're going to do. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, there are different rankings in athletic recruiting. A one star to a five star. A five star is one of the best athletes you can get. And if you get a five star player in football or basketball, your assumption is this. They will change our program overnight because they are that talented, right? And then there are three stars. Three stars are what most of your players in college are. That's your average college athlete. But you can't build a team without three stars. So here's what I want you guys to do. I would love for you to just mark by number one, five star. By number one, five star. And by numbers two and three, mark three star. And here's what I'm asking you to do with that. I want you to pray about tonight and over the next couple of days, God, who are two people, 
for number two and number three. Who are three-star people in my life that I really believe, God, if I just pray and I start praying now for them and I invite them more than just a couple of times, that even though they may say no, if I stay with them, they'll probably say yes eventually because they're my friend and they love me enough that they would go for me. If I just told them it was that important to me, and I want you to write those names down. They need Jesus. They need a, mo- a fresh move of God, right? But for the five-star person, here's what I want you to think about. How many of you guys know someone that you say it would take a miracle to get them to church, but if God got a hold of their life, they'd turn the kingdom upside down? Anybody know those guys? Awesome. I was a five-star. I was a guy who would have been a, a miracle anyone got me to church. That's what people thought. People wouldn't even invite me to church because they thought it was, it was a no-go. But when God got a hold of me, he took the addiction that I had to drugs and alcohol, and he turned it into an addiction for him and his kingdom, and that's why I'm here right now, right? So I want you to think about that person. And guys, if you get one person on this card, just one person to go with you to movement, God has done something incredible through you. And you have won. You've done something amazing. We're so proud of you. But I believe there's a couple of people in this room that God is going to work in you in such a way that all three people that you pray over are going to go to movement. All three people are going to give their life to Jesus and their eternity is going to change because of you. And they'll never forget you and how you loved them. So can you guys do that for me? Can you think through that and put this card somewhere on the dash of your car, on your bedroom mirror, take a picture of it and put it as the background on your phone, whatever you've got to do where you'll see it every single day between now and June 28th, which is our registration deadline for movement. Pray over them and every day see that and say, how can I work to invite them to movement conference? Because we really do, guys. I believe with everything in my heart, it'll be life-changing for them. So go ahead and grab that, fill that out. And I would love it if you would, if you would send me, like you could send us a, a direct message on Instagram. You can send it to us in some way or another. I would love to see those so I can pray with you and see where you're putting those, creative places you're putting them so that you'll remember. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the message tonight. How many of you guys were here last week for week number one? Week number one of 13 Reasons Why Not. I know a lot of you seniors in the room, some of you were graduating last, last week. Fantastic. <laughs> You're adults now, you've thrown the hat, that's over, right? So congratulations, but for those of you that didn't see the first week of this message, I don't want you to miss it. Guys, for those of you that were here, was it not a powerful night? as we walk through this together. So there's a part of the message is Pastor Zach on video. Part of the message is me sharing with you guys at Pellissippi. I would love for you to check that out on the website or on our YouTube channel. I'll try to make sure that we put links out on social media for you guys, but don't miss that. It'll explain a little more of what we're talking about tonight. But we're talking about during this whole series of 13 Reasons Why, we're talking about brokenness because we're all broken. And we discovered last week that we're all broken. There's no reason to hide it. There's no reason to say I'm not. We're all broken. And when I came in today, I had a student give me this, which is pretty awesome. See if I can get my fat face in it. There we go. My mic's coming off, but there we go, right? She gave me this, and you want to know why she gave me this? It's awesome. I can't see you. She gave me this because she said, hey, I thought, you know, you're getting older. And I noticed you're drinking a lot of energy drinks. And I know you got another birthday that's coming up soon. And she said, you're getting wrinkly, and I thought you could cover up the wrinkles <laughs> with the cow. Because I'm broken. My body is broken, guys. I'm getting more wrinkles every day. And I realized, at first I thought, hey, oh, oh goodness. I thought, hey, she is just being, like, mean. I don't know what's happening, where my mic even is. <laughs> there it is. Uh, but she gave it to me, and at first I thought, that's kind of mean. And then I realized that I have like three Grand Canyons running through my, my forehead, right? I've got wrinkles. I'm broken. And then I started thinking about it even more, and I was like, you don't even have to look that far. Not even a big sense to see that I'm broken. Many of you guys know that I struggle with a thing called competitiveness. I hate to lose. I hate to be wrong. And uh, let me tell you how far this brokenness goes, how far this desire to not be wrong and to win goes. I can't even play a game with my kids without cheating to win, if I have to, right? My kids, last week, we were playing Halo as a family. My wife's playing Halo. My boys are playing Halo. They want to beat dad so bad. And I remember, for those of you that that don't play Halo, this may not make a ton of sense to you, but my son had a pea shooter charged up. He's about to hit me with it, you know, melee me and kill me because, you know, I I taught him that. So I turn the corner, and I I take him out quick, and he's so mad. He's like, you cheated, dad. You cheated. I was like, I didn't cheat. He said, yeah, you did. I had my pea shooter charged up. I was about to take you out. You cheated. And I just yelled at him right in the middle of the game, man. I'm like, no, I didn't. You just stink. If you'd shoot better, you maybe you'd win. My eight-year-old starts like tears coming down his eyes. 
He's like, Daddy, that was me. And I was like, well, it was truthful. Get better, right? I'm that competitive. <laughs> my kids, we were in a race the other day because they had field day. And one of my kids was like, Dad, I did really good. I really loved the 200-yard dash. I was like, oh, you're fast, huh? Yeah, let's race, right? We just come out of Taekwondo. We get down there. We're going down the sidewalk. We're getting ready to race. I'm counting down. Three, two. I start, then say one, right? Because that's what you do. And then we're running, right? And, and one of them's about to catch me, so I just push him over because <laughs> I'm not going to lose, right? I'll admit it. I'll own it. I'm broken. But you're broken too, aren't you? We're all broken. Nobody had to teach us how to be selfish. Every single person in this room, we know what it's like to be selfish. Nobody had to teach us how to forget about other people and actually hurt them because we don't care what, what, what they think or what they're feeling in a moment because we're so concerned about what we think and feel. We've all been there, right? Nobody had to teach us how to lie. We all know how to lie. Before we know how to speak, we talked about last week, we know how to lie. None of us have had to be taught how to be insecure, None of us have had to be taught how to be insecure. And if I ask you right now and you were honest, probably at least you know, three-fourths of the room would say, I'm insecure and I struggle with insecurity and, and comparing myself to other people. And, and every single one of us at some point, guys, is going to struggle with some form of addiction. Now, for some of you, it may be addiction like you think about with alcohol or with drugs or, or you know, with sexual things. But for many of, of the others of you, you may rationalize it and say it's not that bad of an addiction as you become addicted to shopping or you become addicted to a person or to a relationship or to your phone. We know we all struggle with these things. We're all broken. And that's the truth that we came to last week. The bad news and the truth is that we're all broken. Who would say I'm broken? In some way or another, I'm a broken human in this room. I think all of us, hopefully, would get that. We're all broken, we all have sin, and we've all experienced the hurt that comes from that sin. The question, the question, students, is this. It's not, are we broken? It's, will we stay that way? The question is not if we're broken, it's, will we stay that way? And we believe at Faith Promise, if you come on the weekend, you hear this all the time, this is a place where it's okay to not be okay. But we believe that God loves us too much to leave us right there. So tonight, we're going to talk about the difference between brokenness and beauty. The difference between living in brokenness and beauty. And here's why I think this is so important. Because I believe that where you choose to live your life, either in brokenness or beauty, where you choose to live your life is going to determine what the rest of your life looks like, what it feels like, and how you experience what God has designed for you to experience. Scripture says it this way, Jesus, uh, or scripture says, we all like sheep have gone astray. Who would say, I have a way that I think is right to go, whether it's God's way or my own way, and I went astray from the way that I thought was right. Somehow I got lost, I wandered off, okay? Some of you are way better than me because I would raise both hands, both feet, right? I went astray. Jesus said it this way though. Jesus said at one point that he, he was looking at a, a crowd of people and it said that he had pity on them because they were like lost and helpless sheep, hurting with no shepherd. And if we choose to live in brokenness, that's what life feels like. Hopeless, helpless, lost, without a shepherd. And there are a lot of people, guys, in this room, I know in a crowd this size, there are a lot of people who feel lost, helpless, hopeless. But the good news is, the bad news is we're all broken. The bad news is that we can choose brokenness. The good news, though, is that we don't have to choose brokenness. We can choose something better in our lives. And here's the whole point of tonight. And I would love for you to write this down. I'm going to repeat it. But this is a powerful truth for your life tonight. And it's this. Jesus is the bridge between our brokenness and our beauty. Jesus is the bridge between our brokenness and beauty. We have brokenness on one side. We have the beauty of life on the other side. And Jesus is that bridge. But if we don't find that bridge, you will feel like at some point there's no way to escape the brokenness. And that is one of the most lonely places to be. That's unfortunately the, the series on Netflix that we took the title from for this. That's unfortunately where Hannah, the main character, was at. And we're not telling you guys that you should watch the series. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say that for many of you, it's probably not a great idea because it can actually shock you into feeling some things that you thought maybe you had gotten over. But Hannah got to a point to where she thought, I'm completely broken and I'm completely hopeless and no one can help heal what's going on. And she didn't see the beauty that God had for us. That's where we're going tonight, that Jesus is the bridge between our brokenness and our beauty. How 
do we stand on the bridge that takes us from brokenness to beauty? So we're going to start in John 10. We're going to start in John 10, uh, verses 7 through 9. I want to read this to you guys. and We're going to break it down a little bit and show you exactly what we're talking about. So he, which is Jesus, explained it to them, and he said, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. Let's stop right there. If you were with us for Easter, you heard Pastor Chris, our lead pastor, talk about being the gate for the sheep. But I want to focus on this idea of what the gate really means. I think the best translation, and some uh, uh, versions of Scripture actually say this, I think the best translation of this verse, of this word, is actually door. I am the door for the sheep. And the, the Greek word that it uses here, it's a weird Greek word. It, it's thura. Thura. But thura means this. Thura means either a door or an opportunity. A door or an opportunity. And Jesus says, I'm telling you, I'm explaining it to you. Here's the truth. I am the door for the sheep. I'm the opportunity for the sheep that are lost, that are helpless, that are broken, that by themselves can't take care of themselves, that by themselves they're left to what looks like only a life of destruction as the wolves are coming after them. But I am the door. I am the opportunity for more. And then he goes on. He says, yes, I am the gate. I'm the door. I'm the thuro. I'm the opportunity. Those who come in through me will be saved. And let's stop right there. The Greek word for saved is sozo. Sozo. And what it means right there is I am the opportunity. I am the door out of brokenness. And those who come in through me will experience salvation. They will be made new. They will be made whole. They will be healed. And I want you to think about a broken, shattered glass. And think about it coming back together, good as new, better than before. So Jesus says, I'm the door and I'm the opportunity out of brokenness. And anyone who comes through the door, anyone who comes in through me will be saved. You have an opportunity to walk out of brokenness and into healing. Does anyone want to walk out of brokenness and into healing in this room tonight? I'm so tired, students, of seeing young men and women of God who think the only way out is to take their life because they don't understand what God still has for them and the healing that God wants to bring to them. So that's what we're talking about tonight. How do we walk that bridge? How do we walk through the door? How do we go in through so that we can experience healing? And he says this, they will come, those that come in and experience healing, they will come and go freely and they will find good pastures. So let's break that down. Pastures, the Greek word, for pastures is no may. No may. And no may doesn't just mean pasture. In the context of the sheep, it would mean pasture, but what it really means is growth or increase. Growth or increase. It's a place where you're safe. It's a place where you can grow. It's a place where you can get better. It's a place where you can get healthier. So Jesus literally is kind of saying this I am the door for you if you're broken. And if you come through the door that is me, if you will walk th over this bridge, I can not only bring you healing and salvation and restore you, no matter what, you're not done, I can restore you. But I want to do more. I want you to come in and get restored. And then I want you to go right back out the door. And I want you to find growth and increase and take that hope to other people. And I want your life to become more than you ever thought it could be. And right after this in John 10, 10, he says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, to take from you. But I have come so that you might have a rich and satisfying life because I have more for you. Come on in and get healing. Go on out and experience more. Experience the growth. Experience the abundant life that I have for you. So the question becomes, how do we do this? Because Jesus shows us that he's the bridge between brokenness and beauty. But how do we walk over the bridge? I see the good news is that Jesus is the bridge between brokenness and beauty. The bad news coming out of this passage is that we want control. Don't we? Don't we want control of our own lives? I want to read you guys another scripture, Luke 9, 23 through 25, and we're going to get back into this illustration of hands that we used last week. Luke 9, 23 through 25, then Jesus said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower... You must give up your own way. Give up control. Give up control. You must give up your own way. Take up your cross daily. Take up your own brokenness daily. Say, I'm not going to control it anymore and follow me. Basically, you're saying, I'm not going to control it, but I'm going to take up my cross and saying, I'm dying to my way. I want you to control my brokenness, God. I want you to take my brokenness. I want you to take it a place that I can't, and I'm just going to follow you. And he says, if you try to hang on to your life, though, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. What does it do? What do you benefit if you gain the whole world 
but you yourself are lost and destroyed. So for those of you that missed last week, this is why we want you to to go back and watch the video. We explained in depth some sets of hands, because here's what we do with our brokenness. We all want to put our brokenness in someone's hands, because the tagline for this entire series is that your brokenness demands to be held. It demands to be held. Who's going to hold it? So we looked at a few sets of hands. We looked at Hulk hands, first set of hands. Now see, we like Hulk hands because we like to be in control. And we don't like verses that say things like, hey, you need to give up control. You need to deny yourself. You need to take up your cross daily. You need to follow me. No, we like verses that say, God, you know, the, the, the fake verses that we put out there when people say, well, doesn't the Bible say, you know, God helps those who help themselves? No, actually it doesn't. That's Hulk hands. And what do we do when we experience brokenness in our own life, when we make mistakes, when we go astray? How many times, students, do we take them and do we grab them with Hulk hands and we go, I can fix it. I can fix my brokenness. I can fix my brokenness. And maybe, just maybe, oh goodness, that's hard to hold. Maybe we have our brokenness right here. Maybe we have our brokenness and we go, well, I do a little tape job. I think I can fix it, right? But the Hulk hands are so strong, most of us crush it right there in our hands. I'm not strong enough to do that with these rubber foam things on my hands, right? But we're holding them and we think, I can control my brokenness. I can fix my life. And we're holding it, but it's hard to hold. It's hard to hold. And then before we know it, we drop it. We drop it. And then we try to pick it back up and we're trying to, we're trying to fix it again. And then before we know it, we drop it and it's broken. And now what do we do? Well, now we're just trying to pick it back up. No, no, I can still fix it. I can still fix it, God. Hold on, I can still fix my, my brokenness. I can fix that lie. I can, and and, and we, we just can't hold it. And the more we try to fix it, just the more broken it becomes. That's the Hulk hands. That's when we realize we're broken and we say, God, I don't want to do the Luke 9, 23, the deny myself thing. That's kind of weird. I super hope that didn't hit you guys in the face. You're all laughing. All right, put that down, right? You know, put that down. All right, but but we hold it with our Hulk hands and we say, I can take care of it. How many of you guys have put on the Hulk hands and just broken it worse? I have. Students, our brokenness demands to be held, but we can't hold it. So the next thing we do, we get rid of the Hulk hands because those don't work. But then we try something a little different. And we put on the Mickey hands. <laughs> I can't even, there's not even enough fingers. This is so weird. We put on the Mickey hands. We put on the cartoon hands. And for those of you that missed last week, the cartoon hands, the Mickey hands are essentially this. They're when we let other people hold our brokenness. Because when other people hold our brokenness, students get this, it's just a fantasy. Nobody else can actually hold your brokenness. We think they can, and it sounds awesome that someone else would hold my brokenness. That if I could just have a relationship with that guy or with that girl, they could hold my brokenness, they could make me better, right? Or, or if I could just find that friend that could hold my brokenness, they'll make me better. Or if I could just get in the right small group, because my small group leader, they're a little weird. If I could just get in the right small group, they'd hold my brokenness. Has anybody ever had someone else hold your brokenness and they just dropped it like a hot potato one day? I have. I have. So you got somebody else holding your brokenness, and It seems like a really good idea. They can hold your brokenness. And they might hold it for a little while. Here's the problem with other people, though, holding your brokenness. Here's the problem with the Mickey hands. See, cartoons are fantasy, and they can do things like disappear. And after a while, your brokenness becomes a little heavy, and they decide that your cracks aren't really the ones that they want to spend the rest of their life fighting with. They've got their own. So they're holding it. Sure, I'll hold your brokenness. Sure, I'll hold your brokenness. They look awesome. I'm going to hold their brokenness. It's a fantasy, students. It's a fantasy that other people can hold your brokenness. And every time you try to let somebody else hold your brokenness, I don't care how much they love you, they will let you down. Your mom and dad can't hold your brokenness because they're human and they're broken, and eventually they're going to let you down. My wife can't hold my brokenness because she's got her own. That's a fantasy. The only way that we can walk into beauty and we can walk out of brokenness is if we stop trying to let other people hold our brokenness. So that's where it gets tough because we realize we couldn't do it with the Hulk hands. We can't hold our brokenness. Other people can't hold our brokenness. So we take off the Mickey hands. And we talked about last week, then it gets to a point to where it feels like nobody's there for me anymore. 
there's no hands in the gloves anymore. It's like some empty gloves and some empty hands because I'm looking at my life and I don't feel like there's anybody there for me. And if I wasn't here, would anybody even care? And some of you have never experienced thoughts like that, and I pray that you never do. But there's a whole lot of people in the room who, if you're honest, you've experienced this feeling and said, can anybody hold my brokenness? And see, the problem, we take our brokenness, we throw the pity party. No one's there for me. That didn't break. Let's try that again, rewind. Nobody can hold my brokenness. Seriously! Ah. I'm going to need some volunteers afterwards to pick that up. So, hey, guys, sit, sit down. Sit down. You hooligans. You hooligans. Check this out, though. Check this out. Who remembers what this is? All right, listen up, listen up, listen up. Eyes up, eyes up. I don't want you to miss this. We've got two options at that point. We can say, nobody can hold my brokenness. So maybe I don't have any hope. Or we can say, I can't do this on my own. And I really am that broken. Who can hold my brokenness? I'm going to deny myself. I'm going to pick up my cross. And I'm going to give it to Jesus because I believe he can hold my brokenness. And we talked about last week, God's hands are bigger than a set of hands. God's hands are like this chair that we can sit in and it can hold our entire weight. He is not going to fail us. He's not going to let us go. None of that's going to happen. But if we have our brokenness and nobody else can hold it, we can either give up students, we can either throw the pity party, or we can come over here and we can say, God, are you big enough? Can you hold it? God, are you big enough? Can you hold it? Well, I know you held it last time, but I'm even more broken this time. Can you hold it? Well, I guess you can hold it, but maybe this time you can't hold it. And we keep thinking God's going to let us down, and it doesn't matter how many times you give him your brokenness, he will never let you down because he can carry it every time, students. Every single time he'll carry it. There's nothing, please hear this, there is nothing that God cannot hold in his hands. And we talked about just like last week, I want to share it again. If you will let him hold it, he will heal it every time. If you will let him hold it, he will heal it every single time. Jesus is the bridge between our brokenness and our beauty. But let's talk about how we find the beauty from brokenness. John 12, 24. Jesus continues this narrative. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. Unless the kernel is put in the ground, unless the seed is put in the ground and it literally dies, it's alone. Unless it dies to itself, unless it denies itself, it is alone. But if you put it in the ground and leave it for dead and it just says, I'll die to myself and see what God can do through me. He says, if its death will produce many new kernels, and a plentiful harvest for new lives. Has has anybody ever planted anything before in here? Awesome. You've seen this, guys. Literally, that's the seed. That's the seed dying. And I think what the Scripture says to us tonight, hear this, hear this. Not only can God hold your brokenness, but the moment you die to yourself, deny yourself and take up your cross, the moment that you say, Jesus, I can't do it anymore, I will trust you to do it, and I, you just got to hold it, because if you don't hold it, I'm done. The moment that you say that to Jesus is the moment that he begins to repair the brokenness. But I believe he doesn't just repair the brokenness. I believe he makes it better than ever before. There's a harvest that comes out of your life. So let's take a look at this. Um, There is uh, a Japanese art or like a Chinese art. I can't remember. It's Asian, right? But uh, it's called uh, kintsugi. Kintsugi. Anybody ever heard of this, right? They break pottery. People break things. But instead of throwing it away or instead of covering it with lacquer and repainting it and trying to hide the cracks, what they do is this. They actually fill in with lacquer mixed with gold. And they put it back together and highlight the cracks because they believe it's better than before because every crack is a story. It's not brokenness. It's a story of redemption. It's a story of what can be. 
It's a story of what should be. So they do this, and, and, and all of a sudden, the bowl that is broken is now worth a hundred times more than it was before it was broken. And students, I just believe this. I believe that Jesus, I believe that Jesus wants to do some of the same work in our lives. And he wants to infuse you with some hope and some healing that if you will just recognize I'm broken and I can't do it on my own, if you'll just recognize, Jesus, I need you to catch me. Not only will he put the broken pieces back together, not only will he begin to put them back together, but he puts them together better than before. Guys, the reason I can tell you that Jesus can do this in your life is because he's done it in mine. And he took something that was so broken that no one ever thought it could be repaired or useful again. And he made it better than it ever was before. I don't deserve to ever be on this platform. I don't deserve for one minute to share God's word with you. I don't deserve to have the family that I have. The only reason I have any of that is because I got to the point to where I said, God, I can't do it. I'm just going to see what you do when you catch me. And he put me back together better than before. So what about you guys? Are you ready to let God do some kinstugi in your life? Are you ready to let him bridge between brokenness and beauty? You see, I believe that the, the door is open. Revelation 3.20, Jesus tells us about this door, this opportunity to walk through the bridge. He says, look, I stand at the door and I knock. If you hear my voice, the door, and come in the door, we will share a meal together as friends. He says, if you will just knock, I will open the door. I'm waiting on you to knock. I'm sitting waiting on the other end going, I hope they knock today because I want to make them new. I want to hold the brokenness because I'm the only one that can. And I want to do some kinstugi in their life. I want to make them better than before. I want to show you guys a picture real quick. It's kind of a weird stick figure picture, but it, Makes a good point. We, we don't like this word, but the bottom line is every bit of brokenness we have, it comes from us sinning or someone else sinning. Doing something that hurts other people and hurts God. And our sin has caused this chasm where we are on this side of brokenness with selfishness and hate and lies and disobedience and, and that we're cheating and we're gossips and we're cruel to people. And we're over here and there's no way to get across. At least that's what Hannah felt like. There's no way to be more, but the good news is that Jesus provides the bridge between brokenness and beauty. And the cross very neatly fits right there. And when you put the cross in the chasm, there's a bridge you can walk right across. And so students, I believe there are some people in this room that you've you made a decision to follow Jesus. You made him Lord, and at some point you said, I know I'm broken, I want you to hold my brokenness, but Recently, it's gotten very real. And for some reason, even though you know the truth, you picked back up the other hands. And for some of you, you just need to say, God, I, I don't know why I did that. You're the only one that can hold my brokenness. For some of you, you got distracted and let someone else hold it. And maybe tonight, for either of those two people, you just need to say, God, I'm yours again. I'm going to deny myself. I'm going to pick up my cross. I'm going to let my brokenness fall on you because if I'll lose my life, I'll gain my life. You'll do something through me if I just say I'm going to do it your way. I'm going to make you Lord, ruler, controller. My life is yours. But there are some people in this room that you came in tonight and you came for jump jam. You came for a pop socket. But we want you to know that there's so much more for you. Student, I want you to know that no matter how you came in tonight, no matter how you feel about yourself, no matter how broken you feel, God will bridge the gap for you if you will just trust him. And Romans 10, 9, it tells us this, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, he's controller, he's got your life, he's holding your brokenness. If you confess with your mouth that he's Lord and you believe in your heart that he died for you on the cross and rose again, then you will be saved. It's that simple. It's a transfer of ownership. I'm gonna die to myself. I'm giving ownership of my life to you. God, you can have my brokenness. I'm yours. That is the moment where Jesus crosses the chasm from the picture a moment ago where he crosses the chasm and he becomes the bridge from brokenness to beauty. And my prayer for you tonight, students, is that no one walks out of this room. No one walks out of this room living trying to hold their own brokenness or feeling like no one else cares. 
So real quick, I wanna do this. I know there's a lot of people in the room, but everybody where you're at, could you just close your eyes? You don't have to bow your heads necessarily, but just close your eyes because I don't want anybody else looking around. This is not about anybody else. This is, this is just really me caring for you. And I want you to do a self inventory. If you would say, Pastor Jeff, I, I feel broken and I feel helpless and I've tried holding it. I've tried to let other people hold it. Nothing's working to help in my brokenness. Could you just raise your hand? Nobody's looking around. I just wanna know where you're at and I wanna pray for some people in this room. Hold your hand up, keep it up. Anybody else, you would say, I am broken and no one can hold my brokenness, students. Keep your eyes closed, but I want you to know this. There are literally hands all around the room. So I want you to put your hands back down. If you would say, Pastor Jeff, I feel the same way. And I've never let Jesus hold my brokenness before, but tonight I wanna give him control of every bit of my life. I wanna do things his way. I want healing. Would you just raise your hand and let me know that's you? Just keep your hand up for just a moment because I'm gonna pray with you. Everybody's eyes closed. We're gonna pray a prayer together. And students, it's not just the ones with their hands raised. It's not just the 50 or so people with their hands raised that are gonna pray this prayer. It's everybody in the room because at Faith Promise, you will not pray alone just like you will not walk alone. But if that's you and you're ready to give your life to Jesus, we're gonna pray a simple confessional prayer where we make him Lord and he is gonna bridge the gap that if we'll simply follow him, he'll take us to beauty out of brokenness. If that's you, would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, I know I've sinned. I know I'm broken. I know I'm beyond repair. And God, I'm tired of holding it. Nobody else can hold it. So Jesus, I'm asking you, would you hold my brokenness? Would you take my life? Would you save me? And would you send me out to beauty? I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. And I believe you can heal me. My life and my eternity are yours. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, everybody said.